recorded live. Well, we got a Just Dave out there. Greetings, Just Dave. Yeah. Hello, North Carolina. East North Carolina. Hello, Dave. Or Just Dave. Uh, East North Carolina. That's great. Uh, I guess three is Bobby. Batman? He's breathing. Got an echo back there. Yeah. Uh. How's uh just Dave today? Almost officially. Uh... Oh, Kelly. It's good to see you here. And wait, there's there's South Central New York. Oh, he's muted. Let's see if I can unmute him. Oh, there we go. Is that? The peacemaker out there, are you out there yet? I'm here. I want to introduce everybody to my mentor. Glad to hear you there. Everybody on there, are they? Oh, we got them. They're popping in here. Oh. Uh, I give them a few, you know, a couple more minutes, and then uh, yeah. we'll start our little uh, show here and see how it goes. Okay. Uh, I want you. Uh, say hi to Boris for me there. Boris, I want you to meet my mentor, uh, the Peacemaker. Hello, Boris. Hey. hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, that's nice to hear. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you taught. I'm glad you taught Batman, man, because he's been teaching. He's been teaching me quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it goes, you know. One hand washes the other. Yeah. Well, that's good. I heard you made out pretty good. Yep. Yeah, I got did it. I went in there and you know, tried, you know, swallowed the fear and just went in there and did it. Yeah. Well, I I I was doing it a long time ago and didn't realize what I was doing. <laughs> that's that's what he was that's what he was saying. Yeah. Hello. But, mm, hello. Do I need to meet with you? Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Hello, you there? I'm here. Okay. I don't know. I thought somebody else wanted to talk there a minute. All right, let him go. I don't know if I'm causing the echo here or what. Uh, someone else. All right, it it went away. Somebody might add their speakers on. I guess so. I guess they're gone. Yeah, it's um. Uh, Quite a thing. Uh, you got to treat them like your little brother, you know, and teach them, uh, take them by the hand and lead them down the path. Well, <laughs> they don't know, but they learn fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought. I thought your buddy Nate might be on here, but yeah, I don't see him yet. Yeah, no. Mark. Uh, no, my my son. Oh, That's okay. Yeah, Mark just called. He's having problems getting on. Oh, shoot. How's Nate doing anyway? Good. Uh, yeah, I guess so. He's yeah. I think he's still looking for work up there where he went, but yeah. He's learning all about life. He's got to do it his way. Oh, yeah. They all have to, I guess. 
Yeah, I did it my way. Right. Uh, well. So Boris, you're home free now. Yep. No, I just had to. I probably just had to talk to the guy one and one or two more times here. Yeah. And get get the initial cause settled, and then right. uh, talk to him a little bit long. Talk to him again. Right. You know, just just to you know, get some repertoire with him, repertoire whatever it is. Right. You're in you Florida. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we go down there in the winter. Yeah. Too hot. It, it's it's hot no matter what what time of year you come oh, down. Oh yeah, here. right. The humidity isn't so bad though in the winter time. What's that? I say the humidity isn't so bad in the winter time. No, it's actually not. It, it can get quite comfortable, man. But when once you get into late spring and fall and some god, and it's just horrible. Oh yeah, I know. It's like you go out, it just feels like you're going outside with ten gallons of water on your skin. Right. <laughs> About the, well, along about the 1st of April, it starts getting pretty uncomfortable down there. Yeah, well, it, it all depends on the, if, if we get any cold blasts, because, you know, the cold blasts are great. They, they come in and just do something. Yeah. But lately, it's just been, you know, right. stagnant. Stagnant air. Yeah. That's why I always love hurricane season. I'm like, yeah, get rid of this and put in some new air. There you go. You know, that's what the hurricanes are for. They're to get rid of that stagnation. Right. Yeah, you've been pretty but I, I, Yeah, I live in Tampa, the Tampa area, so we don't get many of our visitors. Well, we're about uh, 25. As far as hurricanes. I'm about, we live about 25 miles out of Tampa. Oh, okay. In Zephyr Hills. Yeah, I, I grew up I grew up in Land of uh, Loops. Yeah. yeah. Well, before before it became whatever it became now. Yeah. Uh I got somebody's asking who is the mentor again? Uh introduce yourself, peacemaker. You're Batman's mentor. I would have never got this far without you. <laughs> well, I think you'd have figured it out. Yeah, you got another person on there, you say? Oh, we got we're doing pretty good. We got let's see, one about ten, eleven people on here right now. Am you? Hey, is that Mark? Did you just get in here, Central? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just made it in. Hey, Mark, say hi to my mentor, the peacemaker. Mentor, hello, peacemaker. He's another, he's another friend of mine there, Bob. Uh, hello, Mark. Nice hey, to hear your voice, peacemaker. I've heard how a lot you, about you. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I got a good story, but we'll get it, we'll get it going in the, about the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm doing really good, to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hi, Batman. Hey, hello, who's this? This is Candy. How you doing, Candy? Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, maybe I'll get on for the reason why I thought we could have this call and see where it goes. Is, All right, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's mainly reason is... uh. I'd like to show people and what I've learned and what others have learned to get in on this call and uh, show everybody how simple things really are and how we don't have to complicate things. If we just ask the right questions, how we can get the right answers, and how when we ask the wrong questions, we get the right answers. And uh, in general, um, i just like to give the basics, what I've found to work Mostly, uh, well, every time so far, it's it's four simple little things you need to do before that judge to give him what he needs to know. When he calls out a name, you just say, I'm here for that matter. When you get before him, you got to let him know there's a mistake. And uh, you got to let him know you have no, no, no proper notice or contract. And then you want to do the right thing. Tell him you want to deal with him honorably. If you do have uh, or owe anybody anything, well, you want to make them right. You want everybody happy, including yourself. And uh, it's really all that simple. And the more I study it, the more I apply it, the more I research it, this applies to everything in life, too, how to treat one another and uh, how to treat yourself. And uh, basically... Uh, 
we can talk about uh, our experiences, like the success. Uh, why don't you tell them some of your stories there, Peacemaker? And uh, I'm sure you can think of one you, you well, did way, way back in the day. Yeah, I, uh, one time I had a ticket, and I he asked me when I was going to pay the fine, and I they found me guilty, and I, he asked me when I was going to pay the fine. And I said, well, when the appeal comes back. And he said, well, until the appeal comes back, you can rest up on the hill, up in the jail. So they put me in the jail, and uh, I uh, was playing cards with these guys in there. And the two deputies come in, and they said, uh, all right, you're free to go. I said, go where? He said, well, your brother just put up your bail, and uh, you can, uh, you got, you're going out of here. I said, what do you mean? I'm playing cards here. I ain't going no place. He said, well, you're going out of here one way or another. So this guy was drunk in there, and he said, good Lord, this guy's got some bail, and he won't go. Well, I went out with one on each arm, so if they if they throw you out of jail, what they going to do with you, you know? So that's one. But I could go on and on and on, but I'll let somebody else talk. Uh, I think uh, Boris don't mind. I think Boris got one of the best stories uh, recently that's out there. Uh, being the only one in the courtroom, he had no witnesses. None of his friends would go in there with him. No family. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was there all alone. No friends, no family. All of them think I'm yeah, think I'm a weirdo. No, hey, hey, most they of, wouldn't, hey, Boris. Most of them will stay like a, a thousand, you know, thousand miles away from any courtroom. Right. And Boris, they're yeah. by their way out. When the yeah. And Boris, don't forget to tell them they wouldn't even let you. Have your court stenographer? Yeah, oh yeah, I brought in a, <laughs> I, I brought in a, a court reporter one time, and they flat out ran her off. Just, just, I mean, I, I mean, it was great. I just, I mean, I let them do whatever they want. I don't care. I just did it as, as a, as a show. Yeah. I didn't really know what was gonna come of it, so I just, I just did it. Had her in there, and they went off and ran her off. But I went through and said, for the record. I'm here, on, for that matter, under threatened arrest to correct a mistake, since I've never been properly noticed, and I'm here with to uh, deal with this matter honorably. And this was for uh, uh, hearing to revoke a conditional release and throw me into mental mental health, which I call chemical reeducation. Yeah. And what had happened is immediately as soon as I said that, he asked me my name. I said, you may call me friend. And the public defender started speaking up, this is Boris, blah, blah, blah. The judge ignored him and went and said, we need to have an evidentiary hearing. That's and cool. so, <laughs> and then after he said that, he immediately revoked on the floor of the court two orders to have me committed from the state attorney. They were signed, ready to go. This was a show hearing to get rid of me. This is this is what was going to happen if I didn't show up for this. They just sent me a notice or sent a thing that they were having a hearing. No court date, no nothing. I mean, no uh, nothing from the clerk. This is the state attorney sent me a little letter saying, you know, basically the the motion. So I showed up. Everybody, as soon as when I showed up, everybody's like, "What's he doing here?" And I went up, said that, said that. And they immediately called an evidentiary hearing, revoke, uh, revoked the orders on the floor. And the next time I went in, I did the same thing. I got up there and said the same thing. And the judge kept on asking me, Mr. Erickson, and kept on talk, trying to talk to me in that voice. And I kept on asking him, under what authority do you have to recognize him by that name? And he wouldn't answer me. So I said, all right, I'm here under threatened arrest and to, to correct a mistake. And I said it three times in the court before he, before he, they basically rushed me off to sit me down. Then they had their little spiel where they were talking to the people. And every time they went to identify me, I said, Jackson, you know, under, under what authority are they using to determine that I'm that name? And 
this went on, and they uh, started getting a little irate. Judge wouldn't even look at me. He just kind of slunk over, looked at the witness, didn't even look my way. Public defender told me to shut up three or like two times. I ignored her, and they whipped out a, a court, a computer-generated notice of a hearing, and they they put it right in for me. And I looked, looked over at the bailiff. I go, what happened if I don't sign this? And he goes, don't sign it and find out. So I said, all right. So I put under there, under threat and arrest. Didn't put a signature. I just put under threat and arrest. And I walked out. They drug me back in, and he said, you're going to have to sign this, or we're going to, or they're going to incarcerate you. I'm like, all right. And I sign it, under threat and arrest. Give it back to him. Public defender goes, oh, he did it again. So the judge, <laughs> judge by this time, he's just getting a little mad, and he. They they made me to sign it again, and so I signed it again under threat and duress. And I, this time I, I held it up and I said, my I said for the record, my signature is on your piece of paper, but it's done so under threat and duress of incarceration. And I put it down. Judge immediately started going ballistic, called me criminal, and saying, "Don't know if this is your sickness coming up or something like that." And I just stood there. And I had seven people around me, three three or four you know attorneys, a couple of bailiffs. And I sat there, and I whipped out my phone on the floor of the court, and he just went ballistic even more. And I just turned around, you know, as soon as he was done, I said, I just turned around and left. And the next time, the, the two weeks later, they scheduled another hearing. Next time I went in there, they called. They went through a whole bunch of people. You see how everybody does their thing. They go in the yes, I'm this, blah, 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 doing their little thing. And they they started calling my case. Well, I stood up. I was getting ready to go up there and say it again for a third time. I stood up, public defender stood up, and some dude I had never seen before materialized out of nowhere. I didn't see him coming in the courtroom. I was sitting by the door. He didn't come through any of the other doors in the room. I don't know where he came from, but he he stood up, and he motioned towards me to come into the back room, and the public defender walked with him, and I kind of went back there with him, you know, skeptical. And she went on her thing. She goes, Boris, you know, I don't care what you think. This is on, you know, I'm representing you and there, blah, blah, blah. And she started talking to this guy about commitment and, you know, where we need to do this. He goes, I don't think we need to do that. And she goes, well, he doesn't think he, he, this applies to him. And he acts like it doesn't. He goes, he doesn't seem to be bothered by it. Hmm. And uh, we sat there. She, she's all... Uh, blah blah blah, and, and sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher to me, you know. Rah, 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 wah, 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 wah. And me and him are having a conversation, and he goes, "Well, he doesn't seem to be all happy. He just wants to be left alone." I'm like, "Yeah, I just want to be left alone." And then he goes, and "He goes, well, we can call him once a month, or he can call us once a month. I go, or when he needs something, I go, I'll call you when I need something." And he goes, "All right." And he, well, he left. She went up to the, she went up to the judge. They rescheduled the hearing to put in the new order. As I was leaving, the guy stopped me in the hallway, and he goes, we're going to call, okay, we, this is what's going to happen. We're going to call this prison intervention. Basically, everybody's going to leave you alone, and you call me if you need anything, and he gave me a business card. Hmm. And I asked him, I go, is everybody happy about this? He said, yes. I was like, all right, thank you for the peaceful solution. And that's where we're at now. Well, so with a, saddled with a public defender, but nobody else around me to, to, to even witness it, it's still went off. Yeah. Although at the, at the time when you're doing it, you're like, okay, what's going on? What's going, you know, what's going on? And uh, when you when you sit back and analyze it, you realize they did do their job. I came into the peaceful one having it. He revoked the orders, did his job, made sure I wasn't going to get injured. The other guy came in and cleaned up. He cleaned up everything else. And now I have his card, and he happens to be the forensic program coordinator. And what we found out is every record of every person and everything that goes on is handled through the forensics. They're handled through the medical examiners. They're the ultimate keeper of the record. This guy is the coordinator of all the offices to the public defender. He, he works with the public defender to, pro, to coordinate everything within that whole program huh. to protect the people and to protect the peaceful inhabitants. And what 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 uh, we we're thinking is that as soon as I talk to him again, that this matter should be done and over with, all the charges should be gone or, or settled or however they're going to do it, however they're going to balance the account, and everything should be good. And he's actually like the equivalent of Hades. Hmm. He's, he's the, the, the balancer of the soul mm -hmm. in, 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 their, in, their, in the man-made world. 
he's the equivalent. That's why you see the little he has the statue of the woman holding up scales. You know, like like you see outside the justice, but mm-hmm. he's the pro- forensic program, which means he's the balancer of the soul. Right. And he's coming in to take care of the accounts. So I thought it was very interesting when we went back and looked at it. And what it all does, it all follows with the Libra code. They're doing exactly what they should be doing, provided you give them the testimony as witness. If you fail to testify as a witness, they're going to attach you to it as a as an accomplice or an accessory after the fact. Right. And that's what they're doing. It, it has nothing to do with your paperwork. It has nothing to do with statutes, laws, codes, and regulations. Those all that's all for their benefit. Right. That's all for them to to do their job. And what and but when you come in and say I'm a peaceful inhabitant, you back it up with what you say because all you want to do is be left alone. Right. You want them to take care of whatever they're taking care of. You want to be left alone. Once you do that, they have a duty and obligation. And I'm sure if they don't do it, someone's going to come and put a bullet in their head, or they're right. going to take care of it themselves, or they're going to find themselves, you know, on an unemployment line. Right. Well, you know, before the Batman brought this to the surface, that what was going on or how to do this, one time I bought a load of material, building material, uh huh, up in this, uh, in, above me here, and uh, I told the guy I didn't want to pay the state tax, and he said, "Well, what do you got to have?" So I started flipping pages and and. Uh, he said, oh, yeah, you ain't got to pay sales tax. So I loaded the truck <clears throat> with about $3,000 worth of stuff and come on home. And just two weeks later, I get a bill through the mail for the sales tax. So I called him up, and I said, what is this bill for the sales tax? He said, well, I didn't think you had to pay it, but there was a state man in here the other day. And he says, you do. I said, well, if you'd have wanted to. You should have had, took it that day, so I guess you're going to pay the sales tax. So he sued me. So I went up to the state Supreme Court. He called the case, and he, he called us both up to the bench. And and this guy's lawyer, he uh, presented his case, and the judge says to me, do you understand what he's telling me? And I said, no, Judge, I don't understand anything. He said, well, I'll I'll put it to you so you do understand. He said, uh, if you don't pay that sales tax, he wants me to put you in jail. Now, what do you think of that? So I had a brown paper bag as my briefcase and swung it up on the bench there in front of him, and I had a petition written out in handwriting for the lawful money of account of the United States. And I told him, I said, you put what the lawful account of the money of the United States is, write it right in there, and you sign it under oath, and I'll pay in anything you say. And his face got red, and he sat back in his chair, and he started shaking his head no, this lawyer, and he said to him, he said, I'm sorry, but i got to dismiss this right now. And I thanked him very much, and I got up and left. <clears throat> so it's, uh, I mean, they're, they're trying to do their job, but they they got to have uh, guidance to, uh, to know what's going on, you see. Yeah, you, 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 you presented the evidence. Right. You you made sure that all parties were going to be made whole, provided he could do he could show the authority under which you're making the claim. Right. All he had to do was, you know, put it in there, and he wouldn't put it in there because he knew what the lawful money of account of the United States was, and uh, that's the way about everything that uh, comes right down to it. That's that's about what it is. Yeah, it is all about authority to do something. And if you don't have the authority to do it, then why are you doing it? And as soon as you bring it up, you presented the evidence. That's now they right. have to demonstrate they had the authority to come and do whatever it is they're trying to do. That's right. Yeah. Uh, a peacemaker. Right. 
I got, uh, I'm not sure which one he is there, but Nathan's online here. Maybe you guys might like to say hi to one another. Hello there, Nathan. Hear me, Nate? Oh, I think he's, I think he's signed in. Uh, I think he's just on the computer. Who oh, is he? Yeah, he he can't talk, but he oh, can. I see. Uh, he can type in. Well, anyway, you said hi. I imagine he says the same. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you guys. Anybody else got stories, or you guys want to tell some more? Don't let somebody else in there. Ah, uh, that's really the only story I really have. <laughs> I mean, other than the fact that you know I got pulled over one time while working, and I was working for a delivery company called Takeout Taxi or a restaurant delivery. Anyway, I'm doing 60 and a 45. Cop pulls me over. <laughs> the only thing I can ask, he, he asked me who I work for, and I asked him why. Do you want a menu? And he, <laughs> and he let me go. I mean, it was just, you know, that's the only other story I really have, but I thought that one was great. Well, those, uh, those troopers or those uh, police officers, as I said, you gotta treat them like your kid brother, you know. They yeah, and uh, they're waiting for you to take a swing at them. They uh, oh, they're they're already they're already prepped and ready to go oh, for yeah. for a guy who's gonna hurt them because you know, like they say, every stop is unique, and we don't know what to expect. So we always expect the worst. Right. And uh, so when they come out to your car, they're already high strung as it is. So right. anything is gonna set them off. I guess. And if you can if you can diff, diffuse that whole situation, chances are you, you then you'll do better. Right. I had a log loader one time. It was all beat up, no license, no nothing on it. I used it on the landing to load just to load logs. And we was moving from one spot to the other, and this trooper went by me, <clears throat> and his head was like it was on a swivel. And I see him hit his brakes, and he turned around, and he came after me. Put his lights on, the siren, and I got down to this intersection, crossroad, and I pulled off. And I see him get out of his car. He was adjusting his billy club and taking the tether off his gun, you know. I come up there, and I say, yes, sir, what can I do for you? He said, well, you can produce a registration and an insurance card. I said, geez, I'm sorry, sir. I can't do that because I haven't got one. And I said, according to the vehicle and traffic, your vehicle and traffic law, if I if you've got your book with you, I'll I'll show you why. So he went back and he got his book and he brought it up there and I forget what section it was, but it says that truck cranes, forklifts, golf carts. Etc. Need no registration. And he started writing the ticket. I said, "What are you doing?" I just proved to you that I'm within the law. And he said, "Well, that's your say." I said, "That's what the book says that you go by." So he he's writing the ticket, and I said, "Well, I can't take the ticket under those circumstances." He said, "Well, if you don't take the ticket," We go to the judge. I said, well, wait a minute. I'll pull my truck over here out of the road. And No, you leave it set right there. He said, we're going to tow it away. So I got out of the truck, and I said, well, where do you want me, front or back? Oh, I'll move the radar. He said, if you just take this ticket, I could go on my way, and you could go on yours. I said, no. You move the radar, and I'll go down to the judge with you. So I went down, took me in front of the judge, and he told the judge what was going on. I said, the judge asked me, and I said, well, I was going down the road minding my own business, obeying the law. And this guy pulls me over for some reason, and here I am. And the judge says, how do you plead? I said, well, I don't see why I should plead because I haven't done anything. He said, well... If you don't plead, I'll have to plead for you. And I said, now, wait a minute, Judge. You can't come down off that bench and act as my attorney. And you could hear the clock ticking on the wall. I said, that's a violation of the separation of powers. 
you're judicial and you would be legislator if if you did that, making law. So finally he said, all right, well, you go get that truck and you get it off the road and and uh, I'll dismiss this right now. So I said, wait a minute, he's going to tow it away. I either want my, I either want the truck or I want a receipt for it. Get out of here and go get that truck and get going, he said. So the trooper thanked me for not getting violent. I said, sir, there's no violence here. And that was the end of that. That uh, but you got you got to show them the way to go because they don't know. They know one thing and that's it. Yeah. Well, what is it? If, uh, there's no compassion or love in oh, the no. public. No. And then there's and then when you come in private, you have to show them compassion and love that's right. and show them and guide them down that path. That's right. Because they're they're just there to do one thing. They're there to keep peace. Yeah. And and you know when war when war is the way they keep peace. So they're prepared to go to battle each and every time with each and every person that comes That's up right. to them. And you got to come in as a peaceful inhabitant. And when you do, you defuse that dynamite stick that's sitting right in front of you and right. call the cops. Sometimes I I I stuck out my hand to shake hands with them and they won't shake with me. Uh, you know I used to. Why are looking for I trouble? Stop. I asked the cop one day, I go, man, it must be rough on you. He's like, what? I go, seeing everybody as a criminal, seeing everybody as a belligerent. And he didn't answer me. He just kind of shook his head and walked away. Yeah. You know, because that's what they're trained to do. They're trained to look at everybody like they're they're belligerent until they, until they identify who you are. And all they're really looking for is who are the people who are going to disrupt the system. That's right. That's all they're looking for. That's right. And that, and when you go before the judge, all he's looking for is if you have a if you're if you're a belligerent or if you're a peaceful inhabitant and has gone through notices and if you have a contract with the enemy or with the adversary, then he's going to enforce that contract. Yeah. And that's all he's looking for. There's nothing else. All this other stuff, all the paperwork is all hearsay. Has no weight, no meaning, no no nothing unless no. you agree to it. The Batman there used to file a, oh, my God, tons of papers, you know. Don't rub it in. Now he don't file any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. I, I mean, my, my court case, man, they they brought it in. I just looked at it when she held it up, but I shook my head. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I put that much paper in there. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a file of his up here. <laughs> I guess I'll have to shred it. But you hey. don't need you don't need it anymore. Use it nope. as kind use it as kindling and get your fire started. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I could do that, I guess. It's uh But yeah, it's it's so simple, it's pathetic. You just can't wrap your mind around it the way we, you know we've been taught and raised and conditioned to why question right. the authority, so-called authority? Right. right. And, and when you, yeah, when Lynn, you want to tell your story? <laughs> Lynn did it pretty good with the codes enforcement officer down there. Yeah. And uh, I've run a few of them off myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Hello, Lynn. Say hello. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Peacemaker Bobby got it don't matter. But yeah, we ain't seen the codes enforcement officer since. It was funny. We tied their court up, little city court. We got our own court stenographer and everything in there. And that's before I figured out we didn't need to do all that paperwork and stuff. Right. And we went in there and uh I'll tell you that judge was smooth and he couldn't read Lynn's paperwork. He couldn't recognize it. You know why? He had it face down on the table. <laughs> he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you forget to print it on both sides. Part. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah, should have printed it on both sides. Yeah. Well, uh, the thing is, now you don't even need to pr- print it. Just where's the contract? Yeah. But that, uh, that codes enforcement. Sorry, no. What's that? 
That's what it comes down to now. Yeah. But, but that code enforcement officer, he more or less committed to committing a felony. Uh, it's, it's, I asked him, uh, you made a, well, I think you should, told him you made an armed trespass. <coughs> he said, I did? And I said, or no, I didn't. He said, and I said, well, she said, you come, you come, uh, you come on the property with a police officer, didn't you? Yeah. He had a gun, didn't he? Yeah. Well, isn't that an armed trespass? <laughs> you want to see him just look? <laughs> didn't know what yeah, to say. Yeah. I w he's lucky. He's lucky we didn't know what we knew to know today because, you know, what I would have said to that judge. I said, Judge, this man just confessed it to a felony. What are you doing about it? Yeah, right. <laughs> you see? Yeah. You don't got to sue them. Just point out to their masters that they did a no-no, and their masters will straighten them out. Right. And you'll find before long, the police officers say, hi, how you doing? They treat you real nice. Yeah. I, we have no problem with the police here. They come. In fact, one stopped not too long ago, and Lynn come out with this kind of scared look on her face. And the officer right away says, oh, no, no, Mrs. Evans, it's okay. It, it's not. I'm just talking to him about the truck over here. <laughs> Nice as could be, man. It's you know. Yeah, well, that trooper, know. that trooper that stopped me when, when I had the log loader there. Yeah. My son drove a cement mixer down in the city, and there's this 88 goes right through the city, the highway, and he was patrolling that, and and three or four times he's pulled my son over, and he said, "What did I do now?" He said, "Well, I just wanted to see how." Ask you how the old man was doing. <laughs> and that was it. I need to let him go. So they aren't all bad. They're uh, they've got they got as I say, you got to treat them like your kid brother and and lead them down the path because they don't yeah. know any better. Well, you need you need to give them the evidence they need to do their job. That's right. You start skirting the issue and acting like you're hiding something. Right. You know, they got, they got a hound dog, and they're going to yep. start sniffing you out. That's right. I learned that I learned that about the sheriffs. Deputy sheriffs come over here to serve papers. I noticed something. I, I just didn't follow through on it. When he showed the papers, I said, nobody here by that name. Heck, the guy's turning around, going back, getting in his car. Yeah. No, but me, i got to say, hey, what's it about? Yeah, right. <laughs> Duh. Well, nobody here by that name. What do you care? <laughs> you know, right? now you got them sniffing. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're going to jail. <laughs> right. But uh, you know that that paper he's carrying is just an offer, and if you accept it, well, now you got a contract. Right. So it's got nothing to do with me. See ya. Have a nice day. Yeah. Curiosity killed the cat, and I learned yeah. how. <laughs> I learned. I learned why the hard way. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. My daughter's recent ticket, my daughter's recent ticket. I, we just uh, put a uh, no contract, signed, dated, and sent it back. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. And yet, but you know, so far, so that's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. Why don't you tell them about your little episode there with the? Uh... Oh, the hospital. Yeah, yeah. I do have, I do have a good story, don't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to talk about having my garbage can stolen, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the hospital <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah, everybody, I, uh, 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 I had the U.S. Postal Service uh, inspector call me to uh, um, uh, take in the year. Get you on, I'm in the right place here. I want to get you off the speakerphone here. And, uh, so oh, I, I I called the when I got back to the the house I, uh, I I called the local police to report a freaking telephone crime you know and uh, so uh, they came up uh, well actually when I I told them I said well what's your name I said well I don't know that I have a name but uh, I'll give you permission to call me Mark and and so uh, so then two squads showed up and uh, uh, playing good cop bad cop and. Uh, they, uh, they, they, they eventually said, well, you know, after I started kind of giving them a little bit of dissertation, they said, well, uh, something doesn't sound right here. And I said, what do you mean it doesn't sound right? I'm giving you evidence here. So 
wanting to uh, go investigate it. And he says, no, that's not what we're talking about here. You know, you, 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 you're taking drugs or you're missing your medication or something. I mean, is your wife home? Is everything okay in the house? I'm like going, dude, man, I mean, what's your what's your issue here? You know, I need you to report a crime. And uh, so as they turned that around on me uh, or attempted to turn around on me, I, uh, 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 or they did it, they did a good job turning around, but either way, I just kept them on, kept them on point, kept them on notice, um, that, uh, that, uh, any, any, any attempts to recognize me by the name is, is going to be, be under personal liability, and that, uh, you know, I just, I, you know, I'm just giving you a notice that I just, you know, I don't want any harm coming to you, and they said, well, we don't think anything's going to happen to us. I said, well, I guess it's a belief system if you want it, and, you know, I should have thrown a tooth fairy in that one, too, but. So, so, uh, so then I guess they they snuck a, a, a ambulance up the road, and uh, they said, "Well, you're gonna have to voluntarily go in for a mental evaluation." I said, "No, no, I'm not volunteering to go anywhere. I don't, I don't have any problems. You know, I need you all to do your job." And they said, "No, you need to volunteer to go." I'm like, I was like, "Oh, oh, you? I mean, you're gonna force me to volunteer to go? Is what you're saying?" I said. I said, no, no, I don't consent to this unlawful action, and I don't consent to this authority. I didn't, I didn't use them from where, where, where you derive your authority to make that legal determination. You know, things are spinning at the time, but you know, I threw out what I needed to at least for what it worked for me. Uh, for them, they probably didn't have any paperwork unless they had to write something about when they pulled the taser out. And I, I look behind me, and I go, I go, oh, okay, I see. You're taking me by the sword, and uh, yeah, and I said, that, okay, this is it. Here, you, you take me by the sword, and it's going to cost you fifty billion dollars. And this is, uh, I do not consent to this action, and uh, I, I'm, I'm going here under threatened duress. And they said, and they, they made, they said they made record of because I heard her say that. And here I was alone. My daughter was on the other side of the truck, and she's starting to flip out. And uh, but she's a little stronger about the whole deal. Good thing my wife was in town. And uh, so then, uh, so I, you know, I was like, uh, she says, "Okay, turn towards the, uh, turn towards the, uh, the truck." And she wanted to kind of give me a little push, and I kind of turned my head and looked back and said, "Sweetheart, you don't need to make it any worse." And I just kind of pushed my hands behind. I said, "I said I'm under threat and duress. You don't need to freaking tase me, beat me, and and act like you know, like you like I'm somebody that that needs to be taught something, you know." Right. So I'm on my way into, I'm on my way to the ambulance, and uh, they had three three of the bodies sitting there and I said that you are all witnesses of an illegal action. You're all accessories to the crime. If you take and put me into this thing, if you, if you continue with this, you each owe me $50 billion, which I just wrote a $150 billion bill to Alina taxi service. <laughs> well, ambulance service, uh, two days ago. So I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to f- fulfill that bill, but you know, it depends if they want to drop the, insurance uh, claim they added on, which I also put the insurance claim in. I noticed from what authority are they uh, 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 making adjustments on an account. Well, anyway, so I'm on my way to the hospital, and uh, and we get there, and, and for some reason someone must have radio ahead because there was like a freaking parade welcoming there. I mean, there must have been 20 people. They must have thought, how can a guy that's, that says these certain things, you know, and, and and as soon as the door opened, I I started pointing at each and every single stinking one of us. You, 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 and you, and you back there over there too. You're all witnesses to crime, and you're gonna owe me fifty billion dollars if you if you don't do something and go call somebody to say, hey, this is an illegal action against a, a peaceful inhabitant, and I don't want to do that. They all scatter like mice. And uh, uh, same same thing when the when the nurses showed up, the doctor showed up. They hauled me up into the ward. Uh, everybody that I seen, I was just hammering them with the same thing. You, you know, leave your number here. I need to, I need your address. So I need to know where to send the summons. They sent up a couple of uh, they, you know, they figured, okay, we're gonna send up the sweethearts now. Let's soften them up with women. And uh, the one the one said. Well, you're not gonna you know include us in this. I said you're witness to the crime. I just gave you evidence. Right. What do you think? Just because you're going to shake your booty in front of me that I'm going to slap it up? You're out of your mind. And she stuck out her, you know, at, at, at the end of that, uh, she stuck out her hand and said, don't take this as any type of agreement and consent here, you know. I'm just you know, I'm just being a friend of the guy and gesture to say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, this is a peace offering here. You can go out of this door and you can go, you can go tell the people that I've been illegally uh, uh, kidnapped. 
So, so I, when I it was a, it was pretty cold up there, and the, her hand was just dripping wet. Um, <laughs> the doctor he came in. Um, well, did, those two girls were after the doctor. Uh, uh, he started giving some small talk, and I said, "Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, what does this have to do with the crimes being committed?" You know, so I started hammering with the same stuff: kidnapping, uh, felony misprisonment. You know, fifty billion dollars uh, for any any contract he wants to try to adhere to me. Which they 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 did by by billing the uh, uh, assuming that I consented and billed the uh, insurance po- uh, uh, policy that uh, my wife holds for the family here, and uh, we basically ran out of the door. And uh, uh, you know, it got to about the twenty fourth hour, and it was a seventy two hour hold. It was a seventy two hour order under a statute for mental evaluation, which they always like that number seventy two three days, three days of contract. So obvious. And uh, and I was walking out. I had to go use the John. I wouldn't accept any any food. I wouldn't accept any water. You know, the uh, uh, the gal comes walking in and says, you know, after the doctor had, had thought he had a, a consent with me, came in with the medication, some some sort of medication, you know, for chemical rehabilitation. <laughs> you know, and I, it, they just thought I was a little sparky. I'm like, oh well, hell, I'm sparky. You know, you think you know, you'd freaking come and you'd kidnap me? What do you expect? And she asked, she's like, I got your medication for you. I said, what's the, what's the, what's the uh, uh, rule of possession? And she says, well, I don't know. I said, well, nine-tenths of the law is possession, right? She goes, yeah. And I said, well, whose pills are they? <laughs> I said, I ain't taking your freaking pills. So he said, I said, besides, you're an accessory crime. Yeah, I can smack it. So, uh, so I went, uh, so I, 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 I'm I, 24th hour. Um, I, I, I walk out. I had to go use the John. And uh, one of the nurses was trying to handle one of the drool buckets that needed to be up there and uh, was falling over and knocking over chairs and furniture and stuff, you know. And, and this guy was sitting behind there, and he obviously looked like the the doctor of the night or something like that. And he kind of looked. He came up to me, looked at me, and he says, Mark? I said, no. He says, well, that's what it says on your chart. And I said, well, what do you mean on my chart? I was patting myself down. I, I don't have a chart on me. And he says, well, it's on my desk. And I said, gave him the, <laughs> the rules of possession again. And he goes, and I said, besides, you're an accessory to a crime. I've been kidnapped. I'm held against my will. You know, there's a felony misprisonment. If you don't go something uh, to uh, inform the authorities that this is, uh, uh, this is happening. He says, well, I didn't do this to you. I said, it doesn't matter. You're an accessory. You know, if you don't do anything, you're an accessory. I went over to the toilet. Came back into the, into the room. I kept myself in solitary. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, uh, public with anybody. And uh, and uh, uh, next thing I know, it was about hmm, maybe 10, 15 minutes. I didn't have a clock up until the time, but it was short. He comes walking. And he says, uh, "The uh, uh, the the doctor uh, decided to uh, release you." And I said, "It's a pop motherfucker," you know. <laughs> and uh, and I, I said, "I got to call my daughter." And uh, you know, I don't want her to be standing around because I know how you guys monkey around with you know you know, getting people out of these buildings, you know, and I, and I, I see that I don't want her sitting out there waiting on me after you guys do this to me. He says, uh, he says, it'll be about a half hour. I said, you better make it 15 minutes. Sure as heck, I was out of there in 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It uh, took 24 hours, but, you know, I just stayed on point. I said, you know, by what authority, you know, I, I, I'd be better at it now. Now it's a few weeks later. But, uh, yeah, it just, Telling them, hey, you know, I'm notifying you personally. I see you face to face right now. You are now personally liable. No paper involved. Right. You, well, you had to teach him. <laughs> yep. Well, everybody, I have got to sign off right now. So. I nice hearing from you, peacemaker. Uh, yep. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Yeah, thanks for calling in. I really appreciate it. Right. Uh, Peace man will let me know when the next call is going to be. All right. See what happens. You bet. Have a good Enjoy night. your evening. Yeah. You bet. Good night. All good right, man. Good meeting you. You bet. Well, anybody out there got anything to add or any questions? Uh, or, uh, testimonies. I'm always like listening to other people's success stories. How, how many people you got in line right now? Oh, uh, I lost count. Well, I'm um, about 10, 10, ten plus. We got about fifteen. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, I'll add this for uh, everybody else. That, I'll add this out to everybody else that's listening. I, I've been 
I've been working notices to all the entities of billing agencies for everything I, I, I've, I've been uh, operating uh, under or with, uh, I have the use, of, the, the use rights of. My uh, my my telephone, telephonics and uh, and uh, electrical and uh, uh, gas is all being under attack. Uh, they keep trying to put the gas on. I keep cutting the lock off. I, you know, I caught them one time. I called the police once, and uh, the police wouldn't do anything. And I just uh, you know I was, I was telling her, hey, you, you got to put a report in. This is this is a felony. She says, no, you got to call you got to call Comcast. And so you know, I just pounded out a letter and sent it off to the police chief on that one. But um, Interesting enough as it is, with all the notifications, you know, slowly but surely, you know, Shores Forest has got a couple saplings. Uh, I did very little with the city for which I, I sojourn, okay? And uh, I think the one thing I did is I talked to this, this, the city tax assessor as I was actually went into the chief of police, which they gave me a street beat, who was about as dumb as a box of nails anyway. But uh, you know, don't want to put him down. But the deal is that he wanted he wanted to see it his way, and and he wouldn't he wouldn't hear anything. So I just put him on notice and and, and left the piece of paper behind, and, and then went on my merry way. But on the way by the assessor's office, which I think they're the ones that are doing all the bills and stuff for water and licenses, you know, they're doing all the adjustments of the uh, accounting up there at the assessor's office, I assume. And uh, and and when we all started on this, I, I I had received a letter from them after I questioned, you know, the word your property assessment. You know, who is who? Do you mean your? I mean, how how do you determine it's mine? You know, so as it went on, uh, I just I, I I I got the guy to come out front, and uh, and, and I said, yeah, say remember uh, that one letter that came to that had the, you know fr- from from me. And he says, oh, you're the one that wrote that? And I said, yeah, I, I just want to make sure that you're clear on that you're not to recognize me by that name. And that's about all I did to that guy. Nothing very unfriendly, just, you know, it was a nice little talk. He said, it's an interesting way you look at things, you know. And I said, well, you just, you know, you need to be informed. That's all I'm doing, and, you know, that's why I'm here today. And I figured I'd knock on your door, you know, on your desk, on your counter that you came to, and just let you know the deal. Well, the past two months... I've signed the water the water bills as property of the United States. Please send to the owner uh, in care of the United States Treasury. Put a rubber stamp on it with that uh, generic language of uh, um, deposit for credit on account or exchange for back. The one I used in lawful discharge is uh, is the um, is uh, it was uh, exchange for non redeemable Federal Reserve notes. So my first one, the second one is with lawful discharge instead. The water bill has been adjusted. They know. And when 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 the corporations learn that you're the heir of the account, you know, some are going to buck hard, you know, like they're doing with the gas and they're doing with the electric and they did with the phone and did with the internet. They did with the garbage cans. They came and took my garbage can on Monday. <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, you know, when am I going to get my chance? To stand in front of the, uh, stand in front of the, for, for for a witness, you know they're they're passing their own summary judgment, you know their own tactic, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know that they're, they're assuming that I'm 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 quiet about it, and they're assuming that the, the jurisdiction, and it's it's, it's it's to the contrary, because I, I write to them almost weekly, you know twenty letters a week probably go out, and uh, you know that water bill is, is a phenomenal piece of uh, information to work with. It, it does work. It's just getting the entities to realize who you are. Well, yeah, it's uh, people don't realize that all these things out there are natural resources. And exactly. I think a big question to ask these people when they send you notice. Now they're just sending you notice that they're going to turn you off. I think a simple question is: By what authority do you have to shut this off? Just give me a sworn affidavit under penalty of perjury, properly notarized, true and correct. And uh, fine, do what you got to do. But other than that, I never noticed anyone to shut it off. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I've yet to, uh, you know, uh, I've, I personally just to add to that, Batman, is I've sent out enough of those. See, uh, under penalty of perjury, uh, what, what authorization do you have to shut this off? And on second note, is that if if you're requiring payment, payment and what? Under under penalty of perjury, what is it you're requiring? You know. Yeah. 
and they always, and I send this up to the, the, the chief financials and some of the chief uh, uh, agents up there, but they always send me their bullet takers to answer for them. You know, like Comcast. I write to the CFO, CEO, CAO, and I've been trying to find the attorneys now, the transmitting utilities, uh, but uh, but they always send me their bullet takers. The escalation specialist. I like she sounds like a debt collector. <laughs> you know. The thing of it is, um, I'm thinking, I haven't researched it yet, but the people in charge of natural resources might need to be notified of what these people are doing. Yeah, the Department of the Interior. Yeah, yeah, so to that extent. Because, uh, you know, it's like somebody trying to reroute a river. Who'd you call? Natural resources would be all over. You know, the uh, Department of Agriculture. That's on, I bet if you look, you'll find on most of the state seals, you, you'll find agriculture and commerce. That's the the shield they're working under. Yeah. <laughs> and then that fits under <clears throat> international their international law because of the the Hague Convention of uh, part fifty five. It uh means it uh basically states that they have to protect all the assets of the agricultural and the commercial and everything else and the capital associated with it. Which is why, you know, what Gene Keating found is that we're considered agricultural resources. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's what they consider us in that realm so they can offer us protection in international law and keep it hidden within plain view. Yeah, you also but, mentioned uh, uh, Public uh, Utilities Commission one time before, uh, Boris. Yeah, Public Utilities Commission. I don't, know, I don't know if every state has. I know Florida does. No, I, don't know Florida does. Other, I don't know if every other state does, though. Yeah, but just or for they may have something. Or yeah, they may have something considered to it, but it's but it's all they're all use of fruct. They're using the fruit, and well, uh, with with that they with that they have certain obligations that go with it. Yeah, but they don't have obligations to people who contract out of it. Right, right. And, you can contract out of it at any time, and you know it's the unlimited. You have unlimited right to contract. Well, but well, you know, what it also says is you have the unlimited right not to contract. Right. But the point I'm trying to get at here is when you go in there accepting that name and become an agent of the state. Right. See, now you, now you become liable because now you're using assets of the trust for personal benefit. Right. Whereas if you keep it on the other side saying, hey, I'm a peaceful inhabitant. Yeah. Now, they got to protect you just like the birds and the bees and the horses and the rivers and the fishes. That's right, because you're now, you're, you're now capital, capital of the natural resources. And uh, I think that's really, you know, finding the right agent to give him testimony of your position is is the, the hardest part I'm finding. I think yeah. I got a few leads, but uh, I think it can be that simple when it's all said and done. Yeah. But, I mean, one, I mean one, once, you, once they determine you're a living man and not one of their, you know, civil servants, which is a dead entity, which is like a ghost, which is like a ghost servant. Well, then well, uh, they have they have to protect you. But well, the point is, though, peaceful inhabitant, you're not yeah. alle you're not making allegiance to the United States, and you're not making right. allegiance to Cuba or the state of Tennessee or right. Canada. You're, just, you're, you're, you're just a dude on the land. Exactly. You're, and just, you're, living, peaceful, you're just yep. In peaceful peace. one. I don't yep. want any trouble for anybody. I want everybody <laughs> happy. How can they? Get yeah, they, they removed all those restrictions a long time ago. Yep. I know, and making them happy is giving them instructions to adjust the account accordingly, but they choose not to. Well, because well, they still don't know who you are. Well, Just I because you that. say that you're someone doesn't mean that they know you're that they know you're that that peaceful inhabitant. But it's not my and, it's not my failure it's not my failure to teach them to investigate the uh, no right. So they're just refusing to they're just refusing to investigate, and they're making assumptions and presumptions. Exactly. Well, you you just said that we just have to find the right people to talk to to Consider make that this. correction. Consider this though, all that paper is hearsay information. Yeah, and, and you know it really has no credence. Whatever they want to say on the paper is irrelevant, unless you can get somebody to attest to it where you have a meeting of the minds with, so he can notify the proper authorities. Right. Uh, that paper, you know, it's fun. It's notices. It might work here and there, but in general, we need to find who is in charge to notify the people that can make it work the way it's supposed to work for us. Yeah. 
and that that's where we're having the problems. And I I think I got a little in indoor with that with my guy here. You got an offer? Yep. Yeah. They they came up and he said, if you need anything, you give me a call. You don't talk to nobody else. You give me a call. That that and locating the uh, the uh, 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 receivables uh, department of the Department of Treasury where we should be sending the bills. Yeah. Yeah. It's their bills. Well, See, the thing as it, of it is, I'm lazy. I want to get the agent to make sure they send the bills. That paperwork isn't my job. Them right. government forms aren't my job to fill out. Well, that's I'd why be... they have on the back side, uh, yeah. change address. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it all. just change the address of the bill. That's all it is. It's change the billing address. Yeah. yeah. That's just possible. Just thing over. Check that little box. Change of address. Yeah. We yeah. have to find the right address and the right person or the right, right, uh, Right office. office. Yeah, office, person, entity, same difference. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm looking for that one, but in the meantime, I have one entity that knows yep. without having to go find anybody else. I just did it, and they understood yeah. it. That's proof that it's yeah. it's the way it's supposed to be. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I, for one, am glad that the people are that these guys are in control because cause I couldn't imagine all these jackasses out here running around without some sort of you know threat of something <laughs> over their head. I hear that. God, man, there are there are already morons as it is, man. You put something like that in their hands and realize that they have unlimited freedoms. Holy shit, dude! Everything would burn. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, everything would burn, man. They, they hoot and holler and jump all over the place, man. I mean, I see how it is in schools. You know, when you go to when you go to these schools and they have the teacher loses control of the classroom, what do they do? They act like animals. Yeah, and I mean yeah. it's the same thing out here, man. You, you remove the restraints and controls from people, and it's just, yeah, I don't know what some of these guys are thinking, man. I mean, they try and get away with shit, and they're straight over their head. Imagine if they knew there was nothing over the head, what they try to get away with. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that, that is, it's like a necessary, it's a necessary evil if you want to look at it that way. But it's there, to, they're there to teach us what's right because you can't know what's right unless you know what's wrong. Yeah. Well, they're they're the old schoolmaster, like yeah. out of the New Testament. It says once you learn the rule, there is no law, there is no schoolmaster. Once you realize your position is you want peace for everyone, you want to be in an honor, and you act that accordingly, somebody's going to come out like what you, Boris, out of the woodwork. Yeah. The men in black are going to come knock on my door, I think, one day, because they're going to say, Bob, you're telling enough people out there. And, and let's have, a, uh, you know, don't you got something better you want to do in life? Here, let me help you along here, you see. <laughs> and uh, I do. I got other things I'd rather be doing than well, not that I don't enjoy talking with the people. It's but uh, there's some things if I had the funds to do, believe me, I'd be out doing them. Yeah. Oh, me too. I mean, everybody would, but yeah. You know, until then, we just have to share information and back and forth, and hopefully, hopefully, people will get the message, and then it'll become easier on on them. Yeah. And, and you know, but you know, not not everybody's get ready to get you know to to embrace that. Exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, that's why those people, that's why the system is as it is. I mean, people just are not ready for it. No, I mean, look at, them, look at them now at the town hall meeting. Yeah, they're ready to string people up. Yeah, and they want less government. But, they want, all the, but they want all the benefits. Yelling for more government because they ain't yeah. doing what, they, you know, they're double-minded. Yeah, people are getting exactly what they want. See, that's what the thing is, just like when you go into court. You know, I'd say you file on these government forms and stuff, but you're saying you're a free man on the land. Well, the judge is confused, man. The paperwork says you're an agent for the state. That's why I'll call you mister. And then it turn around, but you're telling them you're a free man on the land. Hey, the judge is dealing with a nutcase here. Obviously, this guy can't make up his mind, you right. see. When you just go in there and keep it simple and stay on point, the judge, has his decision is easy. You see, and I believe it's just uh, people can wrap their minds around that. They find uh, life is so much easier. I know I have. I, I gotta say, I gotta say one thing for my benefit, but for my uh, my standpoint is that I have noticed 
I mean, for as much stuff as going down, there's been very few summons, very few letters from attorneys recently. I check my mailbox, you know, once every couple of weeks or whatever. But sure yeah. enough, I'm like on, you know, or a couple of days, I mean, and uh, I'm just like on, you know, everybody stopped writing suddenly. Yeah, maybe your straw man's indigent, or the straw man's indigent like mine is. Maybe he's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's indigenous to the land, you know. Yeah, he's got no money. So why, why, why go after him? All they're doing is billing themselves. The last time uh, paper I got from uh, the court said all taxes went to the state. So all so charges. Guys, that's, that's why I asked some of them. I say, you want money? I said, define it. Yeah. I mean, do me a favor, define it, please. Just tell you, you know, just define it for me. You know, we'll, you know, we have something to talk about. I ask you a question, define it. What is it? What's a Federal Reserve note? Okay, what's a Federal Reserve note? <laughs> it's like the, the questions can go on and on. You know, just figure it out. You know, they, they, they just don't get it. Come as little tender. Come as little children. What are little children always doing? Asking questions. <laughs> you know. So. Ask, ask a lot of questions. Always keep the questions going. Stay on point, though. That too. Don't skirt around the issues. Don't act like you're hiding something. Hey, I really need to know these things. How can I give you a true and correct answer if I don't understand where you're coming from? How can we have a meeting of the minds? You see? I mean, I'm trying here the best I can. Well, trying to be peaceful, but, you know, you know you're know, bringing this, uh, this, this, this need to, to enforce something without providing that authority. Where's your papier, monsieur? I had a friend of mine. I was sitting, I was sitting at a Palestinian uh, little uh, imbus or, or grill, and, and uh, this guy, I think he's uh, Moroccan or something like that, but he's in Paris, right? And I told him my story uh, about the hospital. And uh, he, he gave me his thing about when he was in a, in a Paris cafe. And, and, and one of the officers walked up, and he was going to pick on him, and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the French police said, Papier, monsieur. And, uh, and the guy just went right back at the cop and says, Papier, monsieur. And, and it's like all of a sudden all, all the people in the cafe heard it, and they kind of turned their heads and looked. And the cop said, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he didn't have authority. He knew it. And he, didn't have, he didn't have papers of authority. Yeah. No, nah, I just looked at it. Uh, they put an insolvent. You're born insolvent, and I'm looking up the word in. Because solvent is just uh, like a mixing, so it's water, because you're born born in water. But one of them is uh, being in power, authority, or control. You're in control of the solvent, in control of the water. Unless you yeah. want to contract out. Yeah. Right, and in, control of, in control of the admiralty. Yeah, because cause oh, all the solids are in control of all the matter that, that it takes and, and thins and, and uh, it does whatever it wants to it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You're born in pee. Yeah. Not water, it's pee. Well, well, it still contains water. Yeah. Just has a bunch of other stuff in it, but it, it's still born. And that's why they say the water broke. But uh, But you're basically born in power and authority and control. Unless you want to contract out of it, it's up to you to uh, say who you are. Yep, it's your testimony. Yeah, I mean, and if you don't provide testimony, they're going to go on the preponderance of hearsay, and you're going to be considered an accessory. Plus, it gives the judge a plausible denial. Yep. Um, that's why notices and everything from the credit card company, electric bill. If you don't answer the notice properly, it gives them plausible denial to shut it off. They don't have the authority to turn it off. But by you not noticing the notice, well, plausible denial. They can turn it off. That's all they're working on. The authority you gave to turn it on, and only you have the authority for them to turn it off. Now, I think they're going to start learning that eventually, but right now... Well, they're they're going to learn it on my end, I know that, because... Uh, you know, uh, you know, like I say, uh, tomorrow morning there's a new draft of letters going off, and uh, you know I, I got new ideas, new creativity. I love being creative. This is this is something I've been looking for all my life. I think, you know, there's this stagnant, regurgitated shit that I've been dealing with all my life, 
and now I, I got these things in the, in, in the way the way I read and write and what I see. You know, it's it's so fun now. It's almost like it's like artwork, <laughs> like drawing a picture. <laughs> you know, wee wee. Where's my hat? <laughs> my beret. <laughs> People, people got to have fun, okay, everybody? You got to take the stress out of it and learn the only thing. Okay, what's that thing about Willie Nelson again, about the fear of the only danger? Oh, where is it, if I got handy? Yeah, no, I know. I, I can't verse it myself. I know I got it. I got it here. Yeah, I, I was watching Beer for My Horses, and Willie Nelson said this. Um, he said, uh, Danger is often just an illusion created in our minds, but when danger becomes a reality, it must be head-on with a greater illusion. Or met head-on with a greater re- illusion. Yeah. But Because, yeah, all them charges and everything, they're just illusions if you know who you are and know what's going on. And, heck, when that officer comes, when he wants to give you a speeding ticket and you turn around and tell him, hey, you're looking at a felony. I mean, you better check with your supervisor. You just hit him with a greater illusion. Because it's all illusion. If that officer knew what you knew, he probably wouldn't even be out there doing what he's doing. You see? Yeah, he's, but then again, you also can't educate a man whose paycheck depends on him being ignorant. Gee, you might have a point there. <laughs> uh, I hope there's no police out there. We don't mean any offense. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's not. It's not an offense. It's just you know, it's just it's so hard to educate them because even when I when I speak to the, the two or three that I've I've confronted, you know, it's just it's just it's like talking to a brick wall. I mean, there's like no flexibility in reason or thought or or you know, it's 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 my way or the highway with them, and it's like wow, God, they really got you guys trained in good, don't they? Like uh-huh. robot. It's like that song, green flowers are green, or green, uh, flowers are red, young man, and green trees are green. There's no way, reason to see them any other way than they, the way they've always have been seen. You ever heard that song by Harry Chapin? It's, it's neat. You know, another thing I thought here is that, uh, you know, the, the mere fact that they are going to rely on the, on the state of Minnesota as their authority it's like, well, hey, are you are you really going to rely on hearsay evidence? Yep. I mean, you don't want you don't want to bring that forward when when I when when I speak at you know, at, at at the judge because I'm, I'm a, I agree with you that if you if you if you if you understand what I'm at here, but I, I'm gonna agree with the adversary, and and the judge can have a problem or he's gonna have a problem with you, you know. Or one of us is gonna go. It's not gonna be me. I know the last time I went to court, uh, they got a. I think they had enough of me. That deputy that arrested me couldn't be found. Um, so I take that as a good sign. And fortunate well, I hope for he's not on the bottom of the river. <laughs> no, no. He's, as far as I know, he's a good deputy, man. He got egged on by this other little clown that was there. Yeah, I, know. I don't. I know. I don't, yeah, Bad I don't think he, I don't think he would have done what he did if it wasn't for that in, in general. He was pretty hesitant. and Peer pressure, you know how that can be. Well, I get yeah. my daughter tell me that sometimes the cops, when they talk to her, they say, well, we don't have any trouble with your dad now. I wonder why you were asking my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got to go through the fire, too, you know. Yeah, it's, know. it's, uh, it's, everybody's, it's everybody's own little thing. Yeah. And it's all on an individual basis. And, and the way I look at it is this whole Armageddon thing is going to happen in the people's heads. And the light of truth is going to burn away all the crap and bullshit, the darkness that's been in there, that everybody thought was true, and it's going to replace it with truth. And many people aren't going to survive it. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be lost. They're, they're, their heads are going to explode. There won't be enough yeah, duct tape in the world. I mean, hell, then it's almost worth investing. If, if there was money, I'd be investing in duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because people are going to need it to keep their heads together. Yeah, you know, it, it, it was back to, uh, you know, stories here. You know, so with my daughter, uh, shortly after that incident, uh, it must have been the same officer, had had pulled her over, and then, uh, then you know, because she's got a different last name. She carries her mother's name. She's born out of wedlock. And uh, and so uh, 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 she uh, uh, got to the, um, 
got got to the insurance card on the other side, and she looks down at the card and says, "You're not Mark Garrett's daughter, are you?" And she goes, "Yeah, why?" And she goes, "Here, go, go home." <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes there's there's already there's already you know I call it a benefit if you like. I, I kind of don't like that word in a sense. I mean, because we don't have benefits, we're heirs to it all. So there's there's no benefit. It just we just need we just need what we or we just use what we need. You know. Make sure that everybody else has something left over. It, it, Prepare for that. Yeah. And it, see, another thing, it comes down to the old, see, when they start to know who you are, it's like, I don't know how many people out there watch the CSI show, but the, it jumped out at me one day, the theme song for the CSI show, which is uh, forensic officers working for the coroner's office. Uh, yeah, who are you? Yeah, who are you? We need to know. <clears throat> Duh. Yeah. Hey, another another one. Did you notice who replaced? You know who was replaced the forensic uh, uh, evidence officer down there at uh, Las Vegas? No. So, uh, um, um, Morpheus. Morpheus. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Morpheus, guess, but, yeah, Morpheus is on there now. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, 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 I looked at I looked at it. And I said, Oh, is he is he on there now? Because I mean, my wife watches it. And I just like it happened to kind of spy in on it. So then I said, I gotta watch one of these here. I haven't seen this in a while. To see how he's doing, how he's playing the role after he did the Matrix. Cool. You know? I have to check that out. Yeah, he's done the Las Vegas version. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, anybody out there got any questions or? Uh... Yeah, we are the princes of the universe. Somebody guess four wrote that. Yeah. Prince Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anybody got any questions? There's more stories to tell, or, or we want to wrap this up and shoot or for a another. Sol- day. A, a solution that needs to be, or a solution needs to be hashed. And that was my boy. He wrote that. We're the princes of the universe. Uh, he's out there in cyberspace. Yeah. Oh, that's your son. Yeah, Nathan. Okay. He did good with the police when they came arrest me the last time. He was having a good old time. Yeah, here's here's a guy. Uh, how do you handle a case from a distance? I guess if you're in a different state. Same way. Oh, if you're not in the state, you mean? Yeah. You could send them notice. Uh, but uh, you could go down. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Somehow, you got to get somebody to have first-hand knowledge to notify their officers in the other state. It might have something to do with the forensics officers. Yeah, you might you might want to write a letter to them and see what happens. You know, just tell them, hey, man, you know, there must be a mistake, you know. I'm, 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 I'm just writing you, to, I'm just contacting you to correct a mistake. What well, is something. the issue, though? What, I mean, is it a traffic offense or is it a... It's a traffic or offense. Child? Oh, well, those are pretty easy to deal with, I've found, from uh, they're out of state. Uh, the other state doesn't have any jurisdiction, so you just send it back and, ask, you know, tell them that you want proof of jurisdiction. Yeah. I did it once. It took 18 months for it to finally get over with. I had just about four mailings, four certified mailings, and uh, it got bumped up to the Superior Court finally, and then uh, it was just never heard anything from it. They never did suspend the license. Um, one thing I was thinking of... Uh, oh, you might be able to even go into your own court and say, hey, man, I got this, and I need to correct a mistake on this. I need you all to handle it for me. Yeah. I'm thinking of something on the terms and noticing the gatekeeper of the evidence that I have... Uh, uh, Information, uh, new information on the status of uh, the person known and described as, and then you give the so-called straw man's name. And I would like to have a, a meeting with you uh, personally to discuss this matter. Yeah. And that's how you get in the door. I believe you can give them first-hand knowledge on the situation and what do you want them to do with the account. And, and you know, you're saying I want to handle this matter on with this person which is the straw man, give him the name, social security number, whatever you want to put with it, and ask for a one-on-one meeting with him. 
that's what I'm tending to believe it and do. I got to do a little more research here, but hey, find out where hey, he is. But you know, one I of my tricks are is that, is that I throw that name on there, but I use the uh, the, the hall number on the birth, birth certificate of live birth because the account is the account in the treasury that we're working on, and the 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 vessel is actually the name and the, and the number that it was uh, uh, when it was birthed. You know, it's got a date of birth, it's got a number, it's got a name and a flag. So it's all right. all three of them that dictate the vessel. So. Well, it's yeah, it's just a person, not you. Oh, yeah, it, it, it identify, yeah, it just a person, yeah, I know. But I would say when I when I say for authorized signatory for, right. you know, that name and I put that number and I say make all payments uh, payable to Treasury uh, 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 attention this account number. Mm-hmm. You know. So there's no confusion on the uh, on the account itself. It's kind of how I'm looking at it right now, to tell you the truth. We'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, it's just a bit of whatever. I mean, I don't I don't see people knocking on my doors, and, you know, I, I don't know why. Do I need to fly to Philly to go talk to Verizon? Should I go down to Texas and talk to Centerpoint Energy? I mean, this is insane that I need to do something like that. Well, that's why there's a, there's a department that looks over all these agencies. It's just notifying them, hey, these guys are mishandling the account. There's a mistake somewhere, and they're not looking into it. Would you please, you know, like the omnibus, om, ombudsman there. Ombudsman, yeah. yeah. You know, they're, they're there to settle the matter between banks. Uh, I wonder if they have anything to do with corporations. All banks are corporations. It's all corporations. There's got to be somebody there to take the middle ground. You're considered considered a bank, so why not? Only if I say so. Yeah. I think if each one of these uh, corporations have different levels of intellect in each department. I had a conversation with a credit card company, and uh, the guy mentioned uh, contract. I says, contract? What are you talking about? I don't have no contract with Bank of America. And I asked him to send me a copy of the contract that I have with Bank of America. It took, you know, two, three weeks. I said, oh, we'll have it within 30, 30 days. And they sent me a letter saying uh, they give me uh, they couldn't find, uh, based on the information we received, we're unable to locate the items you requested. And then they sent me to another address and another phone number that's, that's not uh, anywhere on the credit card or any, you know, the billing statements or anything. So they kind of move you up the ladder, I believe. That uh, you start well, to ask questions. Yeah, Jake. yeah, because they know they they know they're dealing with someone that's going to get them a, lot, a whole heap a lot of trouble. Jacob's ladder. See, the thing of it is, you <laughs> authorize. You're, you're the authorization for the account. There's no contract there. You're just giving the corporate entity uh, 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 a direction. To, yeah. Right. Authorization you, to establish to authorization to establish service. Right. You move the account. It, nobody yeah. else does. And that's what it's there for, our benefit in a sense. I know you don't like that term, but... Oh, I thought I don't like it. Just kind of... It is for our benefit, but it's in a, in a, on the private. It's not on the public. Benefit, right. Public benefit is public policy, but on the private benefit is, is because of the use-fuck relationship from the evidence of that uh, that birth. Yeah. Their, use, their use of the fruit. Their acceptance of it. You, know? you, ha- you have a right to live in that oak tree over there just as much as that squirrel. So. <laughs> yeah, I was watching a couple of squirrels running across the street. I'm like going, why aren't the cops chasing them over there, jaywalking? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, what do we have to do? Chase all the squirrels and give them a birth certificate now before we can attach a contract to them? <laughs> Give me a break, you know. It's just like when you think about it, we're all natural, you know. What there's places right. that are stopping us from moving across the, across these borders, you know. There's water in every town. Well, remember, every there's city, just every city so, block. Some of the problems come from the the control of nature. They're trying to control na- some some elements are trying to control the nature, and nature can't be controlled. Yeah, look at uh, Louisiana and uh, look at the ice storms up in Lake Superior when the when the, it comes in. Yeah, some gal- look, at, look at the Netherlands, man. They're constantly waging war against nature. Yeah. Constantly. 
There was a gal that said that once at Lake Superior. She says, don't you think they could do something uh, about that ice coming up in the people's living rooms? I said, what, <laughs> control nature? <laughs> uh, you can't control yeah. nature, man. She, she's going she's gonna to eventually do whatever she wants. I ask everybody, I go, have you ever really controlled your woman? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> has ever controlled their woman, man. Uh, they may okay. she, she she may think she she'll let you think she has control, but well, that, eventually, eventually she's gonna do something and you're gonna just gonna go ballistic. She goes because I wanted to. Hey, hey, I got her. I got her chained to the kitchen table. What do you mean I can't control? Her? <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, Boris, Boris, you gotta remember most people on this call haven't read the manipulated man yet. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, the manipulated man. If you all get the chance, read that book, man. That's a great book. Yeah. Especially for the females, they'll realize, uh huh. Well, I do this too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't realize that men are just manipulated by women who are just really, really, really retarded. Yeah. Because all, all they want, all they want is just whatever, whatever material stuff they can get. And they, what is it? The, the what is it? The woman, the woman who wrote this book is an ex-feminist. And one of the quotes I remember is, women would just rather spend all day playing with their bodies and their hairs. That's all they want to do. They just want to dress up, play with their hair, play with their bodies, do this, do that, talk to other women and make fun of each other. (laughs) (laughs) That was coming from an ex-feminist at that, too, wasn't it? Yeah, she's an ex-feminist from the 60s. And she wrote this book in, like, 63 or something like that. Like, like the height of the feminist movement, and she got ridiculed and sorry. She was just blambasted in the in the press by the by the women's movement. It's a funny book, man. It makes yeah, you realize then, then you that men, are, men are easily. It makes you realize that men are easily manipulated. Oh yeah, just go go and, um, watch one of, think, go to the disco and watch them in there. I think Chris Rock hit it on the head when he when he said, "Oh, women, men only want three of you know, feed me, fuck me, and shut the fuck up." <laughs> oh, man, e- easy, I'm recording this. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Try to keep I apologize it. for that. Well, that, that uh, hey, by the way, that was a quote, so that, you yeah. know, that's uh, you <laughs> yeah, know. That's, that's actually a direct quote from one of his comedies, but I'll keep it down. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, manipulated man. That's a funny. That's a good book. Yeah. yeah. No, but we're all we're all good. You know, there's certain manipulations that we we have to deal with, and it's not just you know within our our own oh, our own marriages and, and and relationships, but it's the it's the manipulations that we're dealing with in our in our greater illusion that we're trying to create an even greater illusion. Exactly. You, know? yeah. you just you want to see how people are manipulated? Just goes down there and sit in traffic court. I mean, oh yeah, I see it every. I saw it when I was doing my last case. I saw it, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like. I'm like shaking my head. I'm like, God, I just want to stand up and scream with these people. <laughs> you know, you just want to stand up and go, what the hell are y'all doing, man? I mean, he's literally asking, are you the defendant? Yes, I'm the defendant. Oh, there we go. It's done. <laughs> yeah. You know, they always ask you. That they, that's the first question they ask you when you enter a guilty plea and, and then the court's down here. Are you the defendant? I mean, they're giving you a way to go, no, I'm not the defendant. What evidence do you have that I'm a yeah. defendant? What's one that's look right. like? Maybe I maybe I am. I don't know. Enlighten me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, they, are they are they in color or are they in black and white? I mean, yeah. hey, are they tall or are they short? I mean, what's it going to look like? You know, how do you define the word? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, there's I, a whole I, lot of questions for one word. Yeah, <laughs> Clinton said it. It well, yeah, it depends what, on what your definition of is is. <laughs> yeah, and if you've ever looked at the word is in, in the black, the like, God, man, there's so many definitions for it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, choose one like of them. One, just like that word in. In had like 20, like 20 definitions, and that's just that's just off why I, why I pulled up. You know, it's two, the two-letter words, man, have a lot of definitions to them. What's your definition of opinion? Yeah. What's your definition of belief? What's your definition of address? You know, yeah. it's a million questions for every word. Love it. You know, what's your definition of definition? Huh? I'm have fun. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, the old adage, man, question authority. You know, really well, means something. Well, it, it just comes more to realize, just like I keep going back to the New Testament, but it says, "Come as little children." 
What are little children always doing, man? Sometimes you can't wait till they leave. Why, Daddy? Why this? Why that? Hey, you know? Hey, they got a family guy. With theirs. They got a family guy commercial on every once in a while. I see it come on, and I think it's that football head kid. He's going, Mom, 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 Mom. Oh, Stewie. Oh, Family Guy Stewie. 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 Mom, mommy, mommy, mom, mom. He's like, hi. (laughs) (laughs) Just drive her nuts. (laughs) And, Renty, I've got a good point here. Show me a definitionary. A definitionary. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) A dictionary is just really telling you how to pronounce the word, right? Supposedly. (laughs) <laughs> uh, good point. No, but where is it written that I have to, if, if you're giving me a your meaning of a word, in order for it to mean the same thing to me, I have to agree with it. You have, do you have right. anything in writing that says that I agree with your definition of that word and what it means? I can. Exactly. I, I have a right to define what words mean to me. Exactly. The man has summed that one up. The man has summed that one up. He said that uh, 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 everybody can have their own belief. But a truth is when two men be- uh, are, are in agreement with the same belief. Exactly. Yeah. Wherever two or more are gathered, in other words, in agreement, the truth is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when the guy got pulled over and uh, he had a bunch of illegal so-called pelts in his trunk, you know, animal skins, and they, they open up his trunk and they says, Aha, what do we have here? Oh, look at all these illegal pelts. The guy the whole time said, what pelts? I don't see any pelts. And it, they they couldn't charge him. I remember that was the Rice McLeod story, wasn't it? That's, uh, yeah, and they couldn't charge him because he uh, didn't agree with him. Yeah, well, that's what it is. It's the agreement. It's the contract. you got to yeah. stop playing that game, you know. Stop adding to the stop adding to the soup. There's enough chefs in it, you yep. know. Stop stop muddying the waters. You know, you already know if you do what you do. You know, it's, you know if you didn't do, you know, you're taking more than you need. That's the thing about it. Okay, so the guy's got a couple pelts back there, and he's like, he's probably gonna make a jacket, probably just enough for what he needs to make a jacket, maybe a pair of boots. But did he have enough for for the entire community? So they all have jackets and some boots too, you know. Yeah, and the tax side of it is because he went and sold them for that uh, for for that uh, legal tender, and he shouldn't have done that. He should just gave it away because he took it from the land. He's got to give it back to to the to the source. Just just do it, you know. So what pelts? What fish? You mean that nice yeah. big walleye I got there? Hell yeah, that's gonna be good in my frying pan. Yeah, now that now they've implemented that you got to have, they're trying to enforce licenses from the shore fishing here, and I'm just waiting for them to come up and do it to me. Because I go fishing all the time, and never have I ever had a fishing license. I've never had one. Now they want to come up and try and do it. I'm like, okay, we'll see. Yeah, you've always shore fished too, haven't you? Huh? What's the definition of fishing? Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, show me where I'm liable to that. Show me where I have a legal legal duty to care. Where do I have a legal but, duty to perform? Yeah, where do I have a legal duty? Where do I have a legal duty to uh, pay some money to get something to eat? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good one, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just going to get food. I mean, I remember a story about a guy who went to a restaurant, and uh, he went and when he when he when the bill came to him, he accepted that bill as the value and gave it back to him. The cops couldn't do it, and then they called the cops on him. Dude, dude said, "What? It had the amount on it." And she agreed to it. I agreed to it. Therefore, that's the value. That's the value of this piece of paper. And the restaurant had to take it. The cops couldn't do nothing. They couldn't do nothing to it. And they both agree that that piece of paper had that value. Yeah, now now when they do the adjustment on it, it's actually to their benefit. They don't realize yeah. it, though. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I think it gets, it's in their, in their tax law. There comes, like, a prepaid tax return, and that's untaxable. It becomes a, a complete liability. It becomes a complete adjustment. 
Mm-hmm. Completely, yeah. Uh, yeah, a whole, as a whole. It just becomes an adjustment as a partial. for taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not just a partial tax write off, you get a, the entire thing. Or does it actually amount to more? Because it's not no, right. they get they get the whole the the whole amount becomes a tax write off because they're returning a prepaid tax. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, you've already you've already paid the taxes. Everything's already been paid. You've been you paid the taxes because you've never been paid for anything you've ever done. So therefore, if they come and demand something, you've already given it because of your labor because of that name that you're using funnels everything into the public trust. It doesn't go to you; it goes to them. They're the beneficiaries of it. Exactly. That's that's what the birth certificate is really telling you. It's it's, it's your indemnity receipt. And if you look at the Libra code, you know, go in there and look at part thirty eight. <clears throat> you see, they said they they give indemnity receipts for the spoilated owner. Well, you're the spoilated owner because it's your value. They've taken it, put it into the public trust. There's your receipt. You're indemnified. Have a nice day. Hey, why don't we do a rollback on uh, on where we started uh, six months ago here with uh, Dave saying uh, accept it as value? Yeah, you yeah accept it as value. I mean, it's just, it's just okay. That piece of paper is accepted as the value. Mm-hmm. Now you're turning it over to them. They agreed it had value to begin with, or they wouldn't have given it to you. Mm-hmm. I'll give it give it to the proper authorities and let them adjust the account. That's right. That's right. I'm not the proper authority. I'm I'm incompetent. I don't have I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the tools. I don't have I don't have the the access to the account that's necessary to do whatever's needed. I, I'm not a United States citizen, therefore I'm not an officer of the court. It's not that's my right. I don't know if I'm going to evidence that, but I would say, do you have any evidence that I am a, a United States citizen? Well, true, but you know, just for the point, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't mind that they found me incompetent in court. I'm like, okay, you can, you can call me whatever you want. You want to see someone competent? All right, fine. Go find someone who's competent for me to do what I need to do. And they found someone competent for me. The guy gave me his card and everything. He's the competent guy. Yeah, yeah, he is. That was a, that was a windfall confidence of confidence. You know, it was just. Uh, I remember that phone call, man. It was, uh, it was like uh, a new Boris. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I called you right as right. I mean, as, as, as the phone was ringing back to get back to me, man. When y'all want to get on the conference call, I was talking to that guy, and we got we got done. We got as soon as we got done, I I, well, I was talking to you. I mean, I, I was walking. I was walking. I was about two steps away from the guy when I answered the phone. Yeah, hey, yo, we, we were all feeling your pain. You know, we were right there with you the whole time. I was oh, like, no. "Geez, when is he done? When is he done?" I was driving down the road, man. Why is the phone not ringing yet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. See the light. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just—it was just amazing what had actually happened, and the fact that we were both the the public pretender that you know that the, basically they saddle you with anyway. One once they go into the incompetency issue, they're going to they're going to sell it one way or another, and it's going to be you know they're going to publicly do it. If they publicly do it, you're still going to get screwed. So you have to go in under the private because there has to be love and compassion there. Because they they knew well after I did what I you know after I, my paperwork was basically keeping them at bay, but then yeah. when I went in and verbally testified, man, that's when everything started happening. Yeah, you, and became, I you fulfilled I fulfilled my honorable duty of testifying. Yeah, you, became, you, know, a, you, you became you got a of Alice in Wonderland. Because yeah, you, you, you got to look at Part Seven of the Libra Code means that when the occupying army is here, you're bound in duty. You're bound in duty to the occupying army. Well, the occupying army says that the witness must testify or the witness is going to be found as an accessory. And you're a witness. And that's why when I, when I was hammering all the people in that hospital stay, most of them were all just, you know, civil servants, you know. But they, they, they don't understand all that stuff. But it, it, it took enough, enough, enough hammering them that they finally have to say, hey, well, I was just astounded that they still built the insurance, you know. But... Um, that's it's just their o- policy. It, it's an offer. Yeah. They tried to bill me for a psychiatric evaluation. I sent it back to the hospital. I says, Roan County ordered this. I didn't. Send them the bill. Never heard from them again. It was... Hmm? Yeah. That what, yeah. They zeroed the account. That was funny. I kept getting a bill back from them, and it, it was zero payment. That was uh, not I remember well. Lynn just reminded me here. 
Is Lynn Volko or is she on the is she on the computer? She's just listening next sit next to me here. Oh, yeah. You honey. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Mark he's always on on point, isn't he? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a feel-good world, you know, and that's what we need to do. You know, we need to make each other feel good because, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't feeling good. And, you know, you know, some just won't accept, and so there's nothing you can do. You, you cannot teach the ears that are closed, the eyes that are shut. So just move on. Yeah. But for those I, we, that are willing, make them feel good. We got one question here. Do you have to swear to tell the truth? Well, how can you swear to tell the truth? Do they want my truth or their truth? I always like to say if a if a blind man looks in a, a a room, he sees nothing but black. But if a guy with normal, so-called normal vision looks in a room, he sees a blue room. So whose truth do they want? Yeah. Or like or like Winston said one time, he says, you ever put me on that witness stand, I'll just tell a whole heap of lies. <laughs> hey, it's, it, every man's a liar. So. You know? you I think that's, I think that was his tongue in cheek comment. That's what he meant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm a compulsive liar. What can I tell you? You know, but you know, yeah, like, but I will I, give you the evidence. Like, honey, when your wife asks you, "Does oh, honey, do I look fat in this dress?" And I know most men, whether she does or doesn't, is going to say, "Oh, honey, you look just fine." <laughs> Never mind, but. Yeah. No, but the, no, the, no man, the, no man would ever answer that question truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same thing as the it's always the same thing as the babies, you know, when they when they're running around. Oh, what a cute baby! I'm like going, yeah, right. Oh, some babies <laughs> aren't cute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, there's some babies out there you just want to look at you know and go, what? damn, what happened to him during delivery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those first few days. I mean, I, I can't, I can't agree. I don't know how. Actually, you actually, know? I, do have, I do have a story about that. My, uh, my friend, my uh, for a guy I grew up with, uh, married this girl, and they had a kid. And as the kid was coming out, you know, that I guess they come out kind of conehead, and then it flattens out. Well, he <laughs> thought he was in there, and it came, it went in, and then the head just kind of bubbled like a bowl of jelly, getting flattened again. He goes, "Is that normal?" <laughs> Just pointed out the whole. Everybody was all excited. He's just like, "Is that normal?" <laughs> yeah, and then we, she, thought, she thought something was like really, really wrong, and she was freaking out while in labor. <laughs> and they told him later on, "Yeah, it comes out kind of cog and then it still settles back in." So, <laughs> just because is that normal in the middle of all that? Just to drive someone insane, but he did it. I was like, "Good job, Ed." <laughs> Well, you know, i got to have a sense of humor while it's going down. Yeah. Hey, Nate, Nate says, hi, Mom. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to know that everybody stays on point when they have to. Mm-hmm. Hey, let me interrupt here a minute. I just want to say yeah. to my boy there, Mom says hi. So, okay, sorry about that, guys. Oh, you're, you're right. on, your boy's on the line? He, well, he's on, yeah. he's on the computer. Right on. Uh, yeah. Hi, Batman's boy. <laughs> Heard all about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I'll never forget when they arrested him, put the cuffs on him. He said, "What a big grin." He says, "Gee, I never been arrested before." <laughs> Don't you mean Robin? Uh, no, no not Batman's buddy. It's got to be like Bat Rat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And you laugh. I got these little Subarus. I call the Ratmobiles. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's, the, he's the bat rat instead of the rug rat. He's the bat rat. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the looks on them cops' face when he come out with the public servant questionnaires? He come out with about four or five of them. Oh, I know. And I got a couple of them, too. I keep them with me all yeah. the time. He give them to the cops. He, he says, before I talk to you, I need you to fill these out. I think he said that. And, and the cop looked at him. He handed it back to him. He says, uh, he says, I don't need to talk to you until you fill these out, I think he said. And it, the cop looked at him, handed him back to him, well, I don't need to talk to you or something like that. He says, uh, well, if I don't fill these out, I don't need to talk to you e- either anyway. <laughs> they still harassed him, man, but he had to be there. The yeah. cops did not know what to do. It was... No, it's walking. a great illusion. It's a great <laughs> illusion. That's what well, had, it is. We had about four or five cop cars in the yard, 
I mean, I don't know how many cops, six or seven of them, wandering around, wondering what to do with me because I went. I said I don't have an ID, and, and they were, you know, you had to be there. <laughs> yes, my boy. What's his name? He says he's right over there. Why don't you go ask him? <laughs> they didn't like that. Try to get him for obstructing justice. Because he wouldn't. He could. He, you know. How does he know what I want to be called? He'd have to lie to him. See. Hmm. Yeah. Hey. Hey, you know, I, you know I, I was thinking about those public servant questionnaires, and when we think about some of the other things we've been working with, you know, as air in servants, you know, public servants, you know, I mean, that, that's what they are, service, yeah. you, know, the, you know, the public service, they're servants, they're the IRS service, they're servants. Well, before you know? they... So people got to look at it for what the word really means. Right. Before they do anything, if you ask the question by law, they're supposed to give you a badge number, a business card, and, and, and no know their ID. Uh, I mean, a photo ID with, with their badge yeah. number on it. Um, and uh, it's just fine. I'll talk to you but first. I need to know who you are. Let's see some identification. They do it to you. I, I think that's paramount in questioning. Is like, you know, I'm sorry, but you're, you're demanding something from me, but I don't recognize you. Who are you? Yeah. I'm just, I, I would just tell him, man, I'm making sure that you you are who you say you are. And you, you're being able to do what you're supposed to do because we have people down here impersonating you people all the time. Yeah. yeah. Just because fact, you got that piece of tin on your chest, because, I got ten of them at just, my house. Just, you know, just just because you drive around in, in a car that looks like theirs and have a uniform that looks like theirs, that don't mean anything to me. I need to know who you are before I talk to you because I don't know I don't know you from dirt. Yeah. <laughs> But, but invoking that non-recognition right away is like you don't recognize the authority when you say that right away. I don't recognize you. Plus, you're right. you're asking them to identify themselves. In other words, you're the one offering the contract with them now. You're in control of the situation. Right. Yeah. They don't appreciate that. No, My boy, no, they, they want to feel in control. My boy just typed in here back to when he says before they were taking me away. That's what he did. He came out with them questionnaires. Before you take these, take them away, why don't you guys fill these out? <laughs> They didn't want to talk to him. They did more violations that day, I'll tell you. They even answered the phone. It was out there. They picked up when my wife called. They had the nerve to answer the phone. <laughs> but, uh, eh, they're learning. They don't do that around here anymore, anyway. I don't think they're doing it much around here, either. You know... You know, like I say, I get, I get, I get something. I make a response right away. I say, hey, you know, I mean, you, you, I call, I call you at nine one one, tell you there's felonies being committed, and you guys don't do anything about it. So I wrote, I wrote to him about it. I said, hey, what is this? Are you a public servant or are you a law enforcer? I mean, are you in collusion with these people or not? What? I need to know. He doesn't write back, but at least he knows that I know. Yeah. You know, so I just for every everything, I, I, I respond to something. Everything. I don't care. You know, it's within three days. For sure, without a question. Yeah. Well, you answer them. To death. If you notice them, you're in honor. You're staying in honor. You're looking for a solution, peaceful solution, to the to the uh, situation before it becomes a controversy and somebody brings you to court. And as long as you got the last notice, if they bring you in court anyway, they're in dishonor. Just bring up the facts to the judge. Yeah. Well, the last notice, the last notice is all hearsay anyway. And the bottom line is, is that there's a proper notice. I'd like to see Mr. XL Energy, you know, come over and, and speak for himself. Exactly. Ain't gonna happen. Sometimes I, sometimes when I get one of those generic letters, I write to Mr. Energy. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, Mr. Energy. How's your day going? <laughs> hey, they want to write to Mr. Garrett. I'm gonna write to Mr. Yeah. Energy. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes he's got three names. I just, you know, I think his last one is Service. So I said, Mr. Service, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, hey, you know, I, just, I can play your game the same way, you know? They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out real, you know, that real quick. I'm not trying to be bastardizing here. I'm just saying, hey, you have yet to come up and speak. Where's your claim? You know, Batman taught me that one thing. He says, hey, take your claim. Okay, I claim. There I go. Yeah, I just did it. It's as simple as that. Uh, my, no my boy just, 
Yeah, My boy on. just typed in. Uh, they asked if their cars and badges were enough. <laughs> if they gave them. <laughs> I wish he could have gone in there on the uh, call. It would have been neat. <laughs> yeah, what you says says what you said. What he should have says, yeah. Well, I got the Batmobile over my house. You know, does that qualify over a little, little over you too, or what? You know. Yeah. The thing is, uh, yeah. If it says, uh, well, what's your rules and regulations say? If he knew, you know, he didn't. He's learning. But imagine they said that cars and badges are enough. Well, I believe according to your statutes that you're supposed to have a business card, a photo ID. And a badge, and all the numbers on them are supposed to match. So, no, the cars and badges aren't enough. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just threat. I mean, just because you got your sword drawn doesn't mean you have authority. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that is funny because if you the redo of uh, William Shakespeare, have you all seen that? The one Leonardo DiCaprio and a bunch of men, I forget who all is in it, but Brian Dennehy and a bunch of other people. They redid Ju uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet for today's age, and every sword was a gun. Ha, huh. interesting. <laughs> that makes for a slow. Uh, that makes for a quick show. <laughs> well, you know, they, they still they still man they still manage to put all the pomp and circumstance in it, you know, and draw it out and make it Shakespearean. But yeah. they just they just they just instead of swords instead of sword fights, it was gunfights. Hey, did we talk about that? Uh, um, that I mentioned to you too uh, uh, last time that uh, Mike Myers has got some sort of uh, documentary out, uh, quasi. Uh, I don't know if it's like Michael Moore, but you know, but it is. A, it's not a sitcom. It's a documentary. Mike. Um, that he put together. It's supposed to be. I mean, Mike Myers, years. like the comedian guy. Dead serious. Okay. It's been advertised on some show. It's supposed to be coming out. I don't know how many theaters it's going to hit, but he's got something supposed to be pretty revealing, I guess. On religion, is that the guy who did that one? On... No, that's my. That's the Moore guy. He's the one who did. Oh, or... This is this is Shaggy, no, was, man. This is a, this, is, was, uh... this is the the Shag Master, the comedian. Yeah, the religion guy was Bill Moyers. Who did relig yeah. religion or religion whatever the hell the name of that damn movie was he did. Yeah. yeah. Religiousness or whatever. Religious. Yeah. Religious, yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I just religious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. religious. I think I, I don't know. that that guy's about on par with uh Bill O'Reilly to me. You wanna put both their heads together and smack them, make them come together. Maybe they'll actually have half a brain. They, well, I'd say they might have one brain cell if they rub, them, rub each other together. Yeah, you got to be careful. You, you get, you, you'll get a, you get a fusion there, and you'll have some Siamese, you know, action going on. It'll be twice as bad. It'll be in stereo. Well, you know, you can put both their brains together, and one of them, and one of them will be lonely. That was Michael Moore. Was the guy who did nine one one. Yeah, Mike yeah. Moore did nine one one fire, but I mean, Mike Myers has got uh, some new one out. Huh. Or maybe my daughter got it wrong. It's Michael Moore's got a new one out. I don't know. We'll see. September 17th or something like that. It was on FX TV. She started advertising, and she just let me know. So it's either Myers or Moore. I, I checked her. I said, Myers? You mean the comedian? You mean Shag Me? The doctor or doctor, whatever his name was? Um, you know? And she said, yeah, the comedian. I said, oh, okay. Well, we'll have to see what he's, what he's digging around in, you know? I mean, they keep telling us. They keep telling us in movies constantly. When are people going to wake up? Hey, only only a remnant, I think, is going to wake up. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I hate to say it, but I see their point when they want to kill off all the useless eaters. <laughs> it's a uh, shame to say it. But. And the, the funny part of it is they're all going to be going on by their own consent. Yep. They'll be the ones that do it to themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I walked into Walgreens today, and I seen that they got the vaccination ready for Walgreens. You know, it's a pharmacy store by us. Get in line. Get your free monkey pus and snake venom right over here. Yeah. Guanine or whatever else, the mercury, what other other kind of crap we can put into it. What well, are just they, they put public notice in the uh, for the uh, school district here that they uh, they'll they're prepared for mass vaccinations in the schools. 
Yeah, yeah. but that kid can go into that school and then say this, and I wouldn't touch him. I'm teaching them. Yeah. yeah. I went to send uh, my... I'm trying to teach my friends to tell their kids what to do, but, you know. I wouldn't but, send my uh, children yeah. to them. I wouldn't send my no, children to them either. places, man. It's, no, you know. All they, all they have to know is how to, you know, read, write, add, subtract, divide, and multiply. Everything else they can learn on their own. Anything else they can learn to experience. Exactly. Well, I told him. I told him that they're not going to let him in there if he doesn't take it. I said, no problem. I'll teach you. Yeah. yeah. You know, very, very much. Now he wants to play football with his friends. Really and, know. You know, he's an A-B student anyway, so, you know, he's, he's getting something out of the books. Well, that's the problem is just regurgitating whatever they want you to regurgitate. That's, that's, that's the yeah. problem I always had with schools is after, you know, about fifth or sixth grade, you're doing the same shit every year. Every year, it's the same regurgitation. Hey, with cheek, the exception, With the exception of the... Big cheek. Cheek oh. for it. Sorry, man. With the exception of, of math and the sciences, you're really not doing anything different. It's just regurgitation yeah. over and over and over again. With one exception, he lives with me. So <laughs> he can manipulate it a little bit. I thought it was impossible for him to live with you. How can two objects occupy the same space? Man. He live near me. Live near me. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I can't. Thank you. Thank you for the it's correction. Like, it's all rehearsals, people. That's all it is. Everybody corrects each other. It's like like learning a language. You gotta you gotta right. correct each other. It's like uh, how can you go through a stop sign? Cops are through that stop sign. He says, how can I do that, Judge? How can two objects occupy the same space at the same time? What or or if I went if I went through that stop sign, why is it still there? Yeah. I went I went around it, but I don't know that I went through it. Huh. <laughs> it's another one. I love the speed limit signs. 45, speed limit. They I know, every time a, I see them now. They want you to make a judicial determination if it's miles per hour or, you yeah, know. There's no quantification there. Yeah. It's yeah. ambiguous and vague. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, you know what it means. I do. I do? Oh, you per, you got first-hand personal witness knowledge, do you? You know. Are <laughs> yeah. you willing really to testify you in know, court? <laughs> now you're a mind reader, too, and this and being a cop. Wow, that's that's a moonlighting event there, man. Wow. No, no, I didn't get married one day. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you some questions about my future? <laughs> yeah, you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. No, you don't want to make fun of them. You just want to, you know, give them, give them the facts. You know, <laughs> but it may sound funny. You know, but it's just you got to keep yourself from choking down the choking the laughter in front of them because you don't take it offensive. You know, I'm sorry, but it's the truth, man. You can't handle it. I'm sorry. You know. Yeah. And when you realize who you are and you can get over that fear, it's it's a it's a whole new life out there. Yep. You know, just you know, a lot of people just aren't ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, like like I say, it's it's a, it's a it's a language you have to learn, and uh, it, it, we're talking about phrases, but it's a language, and, and, and you just have to, we're, we're just learning to think differently. You know, we're we're rethinking our we're retraining our brain to think differently. You know, that's basically what repent means: is change your way of thinking. But they're still trying to go into those buildings and think that you know they're going to be saved by somebody that already forgave them for everything anyway. No, they don't think they have to do anything. That's the problem. Is is that some mythical, you know, some dude's going to show up from the heavens and come down on earth and magically absolve them of all their, you know, of everything they had to do? It don't work like that. Man. It's it's just stories I'm telling you how to how to act and what to do. But, but the problem it's is the, the, the hypocritical part of that is is the guy was already here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's hearsay. Well, I, that's, that's what I know. Then right? again. It's all they, they, they accept the forgiveness, but they're but they're still trying to repent. And I'm like, well, wait, wait a minute. I mean, you know, how are you trying to do the two at the same time? You know, you can't accept both. You can't be both. I mean, you guys, you, you accept this, but 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 you, but you're acting like like it didn't happen. You know, I'm like, I, I accept it and I see it. You know, and now I know now I know who he is. He's that guy floating over there in the Treasury Department to 
and indemnify, indemnify me from my from my sin, my debt. Yep. You know, it's a piece of paper. It's all been paid, you know? boys and girls. What do you believe? Created in my image, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just it's it's it's. That's the only problem. Lost you there a minute, Mark. I'm sorry. I lost you there for a little bit or something. There was static, but you're back. I got I, I got a uh, I got a warning for my phone. It says if I don't plug it in, I'm not going to be talking to you much longer. Yeah. All right. I'm back in the back in the repower. But uh, no, what was it saying? It was uh, uh, I forget. It. It's on recording. <clears throat> Plus, I was up uh, since uh, yesterday. I did a night job at the at the restaurant from two o'clock in the morning until. I'm still up from it, so I'm I'm pretty slapstick right now. Yeah. Uh, you, we got a question. If you want to get a recording of this, uh, it'll be on yeah talk shoe. Uh, I'm Batman fifty seven. That's I as in idiot, M as in monkey, B as in Batman. You know B A T M A N fifty seven. And uh, you should be able to download the. Recording, if all goes well. Yeah, it usually goes well. And, uh... But, yeah, we well, we got two hours in anyway, boys and girls. Two hours uh, by? Nice. Yeah. Anybody, a good time. Uh, anybody got anything want to jump in besides us guys here hogging the whole call? Heck, we have I don't know. If there's nothing much more, we probably can end this. It's been fun. I'm not sure when I'm going to do another one, but the people on my list, I will send them notice, and if they want to accept the offer, I'd be glad to do this again. Hey, Bob. Yes. If you're on, uh, why don't you, next time you're on the Sam Davis call, because they usually end the call after it's over, you know that? If people want to continue to talk, you got to try and get, you know, let them know that there's another line they could go to. That you know, if the, if the topic was interesting, the conversation was good, you know. Yeah. Oh, you mean give them notice of this call on there? Yeah. Yeah, just have I people jump over to that call or your call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can do it. You can do, kinda, it in, you can do it in the start. I kind of was being picky about who got on this call. I, I got to think about it. Like I say, I don't know. See what happens. I don't know whether to try to do this once a week or once a month. The thing of it is, what we discuss here, we go over the same stuff over and over again. Uh, it's simple. It's so simple. I know. Uh, the people I, on the Davis call don't get it. We, not, well, that's their problem. I can't help them. They don't want to hear it. The thing of it is, see the problem on some of them, I think the one of them just uh, Shane, for instance, I think one of his problems is he's suing them people. I think he's he's at war with them. Yeah, that's why he's getting kicked around the way he is, and boy, he wants to he wants to remedy that. He wants to let him know he's a man of peace. I'll tell you, they're gonna they'll they'll destroy him. He ain't gonna win. I think you got to stay away. You don't want to sue him if you're in court and they, they're uh, obnoxious and stuff. Well, you can point out the criminal acts they committed and let them admit to them. But I don't see any reason to be suing anybody, especially when. I see down the road that if we're men of peace, the account's already paid for, we're going to be getting a card or something. Someday I think the men in black are going to knock on my door and say, here, Bob, go live your life. You see? Hey, Bob, you know, and that's not, stop telling everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, like, like, the guy, like the guy who came out and talked to me, he immediately said all he wants to do is left alone. He just wants to live his life in peace. Yep. He, he knew exactly what I wanted. They know exactly what, and when you come in as a man of peace, they know, they know. And they know to act accordingly. They know that, I mean, that's all it is, because you're the Prince of Peace. That's what, you know, that's what we are. We're the, we're the, we're the, we're the, we're the royalty of peace. We're princes of peace. But if you're going to continue your actions, I'm going to bill you, and I can yeah. forgive that bill. I can forgive that bill. Yeah. You know, no, it's just like that one guy's going in there and uh, and suing them or whatever. Well, he's suing the state, so therefore, under their rules of nations, under the laws of nations, you lose protections of the state. 
So they're no longer obligated to, to, to care about whatever he is. They're they're free they're free reign to destroy him as long as he wants to keep doing whatever he's doing. Yep. Then they but, will destroy him. They'll 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 just take him down. He's being a belligerent combatant. He, yep. You know he, you don't realize when you stepped into that courtroom you gave that judge plausible deniability by your actions. Right. And if you don't correct a mistake, and you go after them, now you're a combatant. You're an enemy of the state. And I'm telling you, boys and girls, you're outgunned. You, you don't want to be an enemy of the state. That's mm-hmm. the last place you want to be. Yep. It's bad enough. You're tra- it's bad enough you're trading with the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm not trading with them anymore. I'm just saying, hey, here I am. This is this is the this is the accepted uh, accept, accepted uh, do- document, coupon, receipt, whatever you got here. And uh, what's your problem? You know, yeah. I accept it. I, I agree with you. Now adjust the account. The thing of it is, too, people don't realize they need to stay on point. They might go before the judge a bunch of different times, but somewhere in there before that judge, you gave that judge reason to believe you're not telling, you know, you can't make up your mind who you are. Right. You see? And, and, and that's, I think, why it works so well with you, Boris, when you went in there. You just stay right on point each time, didn't vary mm-hmm. from what you were saying, and right. boom. They handled it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they're going in there and they're saying one thing and then saying another thing, and they're confusing the issues. And the judge, you know, they're on the fence. You got to clean it up. Yep. I mean, you, real- you do have you do have a duty to act a certain way. Yeah. I mean, we're under we're in occupied territory, so whatever they think, yeah. you know. They know you by your fruits. It's yep. something, something somebody did. You know, no, the, the remnant can't be harmed at all. You right. know, can't can't be can't be touched, and they know that. There's 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 universal rules at play, and yeah. we're here to learn those universal rules and apply them. Either we do or we don't. If we don't, then we're doomed to repeat. If we do, we can go on, and we'll be we, we'll be brought to that next level or whatever it is. We're gonna be brought to the next state of consciousness. Yeah. So. All right. I am off, guys. I am All right, man. Nice call. All right. That man is wonderful. I'm glad we got this together. It's been some Thank time you. we had a big call. Yeah. Thank you for your participation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting it together. Oh, it's been yeah. fun. I, we'll talk again later. Bye-bye. All right. And uh, anybody else got anything to say or... I probably wrap this up. Going once. Uh, I think we're about done. Yeah. Going twice. Well, third time's a charm. You all hey, have man. a. Go ahead. Uh, uh, this round, I just wanted. I just came on about five minutes, six, ten minutes ago. I'll have to go back and download and listen to your conversation. But uh, I just want to uh, tell you, I made it. Well, that's good. I appreciate you got on here. Uh, it's, I think it's been a pretty good call. You can tell me after you listen. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, thanks for chiming in. Okay. You got, well, you, anything, you got any things you want to ask or talk about or any successes? Uh, I'll still, you know, I can still keep this going. It's it's up to you. No, I, I'll let you go. Uh, I'll just go back and listen to your call. I'll probably, like you were saying there toward the end, it's all really pretty simple. I mean, yeah. All righty. Only hash it out so much, probably. Yeah, that's it's good. good. It's nice to hear about successes as people try this and have successes. It'll be nice to hear them come to the table with. Oh yeah, we have, we have a couple of them there at the beginning there. Yeah. Oh, my was? Men- yeah, my mentor was on there. The guy who uh, started training me way back, teaching me how to think a little different and. Uh, he had a couple of his little stories to tell, and, and Boris and Mark. And, good. And, uh, well, good. How's he living nowadays? Fine. He's he's happy doing his thing. And uh, but, that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll let you go. All right. Thanks. Thanks everybody for being on here and. 
I guess I'm going to call it a night. Good evening and keep it simple. All right. Take it easy, guys. Good night.